What up African world, it's Home Team here and welcome back to another video of African history, culture, and worldview. Also, welcome back to my series, A Closer Look. Today, we're going to be taking a closer look at the Baganda people. By supporting this channel on Patreon, you're helping in the creation of these videos and contributing to this content. On Patreon, you can find more in-depth courses on African history. And with a word from my sponsors, there's a new social media platform dedicated to educating and uplifting our people. No longer do we have to be censored for speaking our truth. Our Black Truth is Black owned and operated and a place where you can post your businesses and even monetize your content. You can download the app at Google Play or the App Store, and you can visit the website at OurBlackTruth.com. Links to everything in the description box below. As a disclaimer, with all my Closer Look videos, it's important to understand that one of the best ways to understand the history of any particular African ethnic group is from the mouths of those people themselves. Their perspective should be principled. Most modern sources may be factually correct, but at times they may still fall victim to improper context, which can inadvertently advance misleading information. So it would be nice to hear the knowledge base from the people themselves in the comment section below to filter out any improper perspective. The Baganda people are said to number around 5 million. They are considered by many to be the dominant ethnic group in Uganda, both in numbers and influence. The Baganda are not just located in Uganda, however, as it concerns their population on the African continent, they have sizable populations in both Kenya and the Democratic Republic of Congo. Like virtually all ethnic groups on the continent of Africa, the Baganda people have a history of migration and are thought to be the descendants of settlers who arrived in southern and central Uganda around the 13th century. They speak a language known as Luganda and are known mostly for founding a very powerful state known as the Kingdom of Buganda, which still exists today, but we'll get into that later. The Baganda people have an interesting story about the first human. According to their culture, Kintu was the first man on earth. Like most African mythology, there tends to be multiple versions of the same story, but in general, Kintu is believed to have married a bride from the heavens named Nambi, who favored him. This didn't go over well with the principal supreme being called Gulu, and so Kintu had to endure a series of tests to prove that he was worthy. His love, Nambi, secretly assisted him and he was able to accomplish all the task. Kintu was also believed to have been the first king of the Baganda people. In the 14th century, a man united the various Baganda clans, starting the first organized kingdom. He called himself Kato Kintu in an apparent attempt to win over the Baganda people. Over the following centuries, the Baganda royal class consolidated their power and began winning over new territory from the neighboring Banyoro Katara kingdom. The Baganda referred to their king as Kabaka and he is recognized as the political, judicial, and spiritual leader of the people. Most Bagandans, like other African ethnic groups, worked in agriculture, lived on small villages, and were organized into a system of clans. Baganda society is unique because even though it was largely based on patrilineal lines, as in family ties being traced through the male line, when it came to royalty, however, succession was matrilineal. Over time, the Baganda people were exposed to the Abrahamic religions and most converted to either Islam or Christianity. Most Baganda practice an indigenous religion until the assertive positioning of Islam and Christianity in the 20th century calls the people to abandon Balubale. They worship gods who represented various physical properties and mental attitudes. Temples were often identified with fertility, warfare, water, or health. Even as Islam and Christianity were growing, the people still believed in the spirits of the ancestors. They visited the temples to learn of impending dangers and how to avoid them. Because the Muzimu are the most important spirits as ancestors, the people 
they are able to protect and shelter are always those who express faith in them. The Kingdom of Buganda was so well respected and beloved that not even colonialism or modern government could truly abolish its influence. When the country of Uganda won its independence in 1963, the government initially allowed the state of Buganda to retain regional autonomy within the new nation. In 1966, however, Prime Minister Milton Obote abolished the monarchy and expelled the king, Kabaka Mutesa II. It was not until 1993, when Yoweri Museveni took over as president, that the Bugandan monarchy was restored. Since then, the king has held ceremonial position in the government. Buganda is one of the very few relatively large African kingdoms that still exist today. The current king of Buganda is Muenda Mutebi II, and he is the 36th Kabaka or king of Buganda. The current queen of Buganda is Sylvia Naginda. It's so interesting that the kingdom of Buganda was able to nominally survive the waves of power transitions and still has some influence in their region. It's testament to the impact of the Baganda people in Uganda. While making this video, I couldn't help but see the similarities between the term Wakandan and Bagandan, and the fact that the kingdom of Buganda actually still exists today with a reigning king and queen. It's just fascinating to say the least. Well, I'm all out guys. If you like these videos, consider supporting the home team on patreon.com. The link is in the description box below. Know thyself. Remember your ancestors. Peace.